అంతా క్లారిటీగా కాదు సార్ జడ్జి రంపచ్చి డిసిజన్ రంపతే మరి రంగ చూడా చిన్న ఇంజనీర్ వాళ్ళు ఒక్కో చేత వచ్చిన మాట ముందు తేమో ఎన్నో ఏమంటే లమంతా ఉంది కారణం సరి నరంగ తిరిగి కాన్సన్ట్రేట్ చేసి సగే చేసి తండ్రి చేసే పర్సనలీ ఐ ఫీల్ దట్ కెంచన్ ట్రంగ్ బచ్చే గివింగ్ మీ దిస్ ఎక్సలెంట్ ఆపర్చునిటీ is at the same time a waste of your time. <laughs> However, I feel that I have to obey his command. <laughs> so here I am. Neta chatonga gambal na inda nanzo chide tong ron tong nikol konsana long zon bote toma tengi de ముందు జోబు సోంజి చందే జోబు సోంజి చందే ఏం బిజినెస్ కాబట్టి సౌంద సోస అతే రూమ్ చీపి డ్రైవర్ సోంజి చీపీ పది కింది సగన మారి తాయ్యూ నింజి చింపి కోవిడ్ నొంగాలే తాజు సోంజి చెంది తీ గోనకు పొమేసాంత సోసాడు బాగా పరి దీని జిబ నాయి కొంగ సాలే తర్చే నింబోబ సో జిబరి సో జిబి అయ్యా పాపయ్యా మీ సూపాదం తుసేదం కాసు సో పాప టైం పంపించే టైం వద్దంపించి కొంచెమే తెల్లో తోంబో తుచి గోన సోనా సెలో జాబ్ సంజి నా సోదింగ్ నాకి పంజోదా చేట్రాని సెల దొంగా కంగా మేపినా చూలం పాదం కుబాయి తెదో మా మధ్యనే జోదిన సోనాతో హిమాచని సంచిందా కంగాతో దొంగ నమ్మకు పై కాదు సార్ దొంగ తెల్లతే ట్రోందే తుచి దా ట్రోందే సమయోడి తెల్లతే చూతే పాతే తు తెల్ల గోనే కొంపారి తే మాసి జగం పాపయ్య లఫే గుబిజన్ సంచి కొంగ దుసనా సొన్నా చూసే రేపు తప్ప రంగాల పేపాలే మేము తీసుకెళ్ళి పేరు ఎంసి నీ పాడు ఏదో మడవే తన మిరిగి తొమ్మిదం చేసిందం జోంగింగ్ ఎంగి జగాలు పే చూడు సమే కాంగ్రెస్ జరీసే వాదం జీవి రైసే వాదం మోరీస్ అవుతాం దబాగ రీస్ అవుతాం రీజ్ అవ్వరి రీజ్ అవ్వతే తాము చే మరి తండ్రి మారి ఎన్నో రి కాయి నాచి జోబాయో నాయో షేయో నాయో కేసు కాబట్టి రే కాయి తనే కాసు తండ్రి నాకి కొరం చోళ్ళు షర్ నిపా కాయో నాయో తుండో నాకి మా మెస్ పేపింది దుఃఖ తేల్దని కొంపారి వాట్ ఐ వాంట్ టాక్ అబౌట్ దిస్ ఆఫ్టర్ నూన్ ఇస్ దట్ the concepts of world peace and common welfare to everyone on this planet of political freedom and of human rights began with the samyak sambuddha the buddha achieved awakening through pursuing the path 
during three innumerable aeons of gathering the accumulations. And he did not do this, go to all of this effort for his own benefit. His motivation in pursuing the path was great compassion for all beings and the wish to achieve the means to liberate all beings. And that motivation, the strength of that motivation, enabled him to pursue the path throughout the three innumerable uh, aeons. The culmination of that path was his appearance as a Buddha and his teaching. Now, as you know, his awakening occurred in India. He appeared in that country and was born in a family that was of the nobility and was affluent. The Buddha did not appear at a time of world peace and complete welfare. He did not appear in the golden age. In a golden age, people are less miserable. Therefore, they are far less receptive to Dharma. As things get worse, as people suffer more, they become more and more inspired to hear and practice Dharma. In other words, the Buddha appeared in this world for the sake of people like ourselves. Now, the reason that he was born in India is twofold. One reason, you could say, is that the merit accumulated by other individuals living in that country uh, caused the Buddha to appear there. But a second and very significant reason is that the Buddha chose to take birth in the most hierarchical and uh, most uh, prejudicial society that existed at that time. At the time of the Buddha, the caste system in India was uh, extremely uh, rigidly enforced. There were four castes, the Brahmin, the Kshatriya or nobility, the commoners, and the, those of low caste. All of these, of course, are human beings. And nowadays, we would regard all of them as having equal rights and expect that they would have equal opportunities. But at the time at which the Buddha was living, if you were of the highest caste, regardless of how stupid and useless you might be, <laughs> you were viewed as a god. And if you were of the lowest caste, regardless of how intelligent, resourceful, and kind you might be, you were viewed and treated as lower than an animal. ジャビグジャパタベンデンデンゴロニエシャサグパタラジャビグジャスチョンデンジチデノリエステラネノネケンジグタネジャスチョンドンワケバゾンボヤンデジャリヒンナムジチョンコカンセナトノンチンバチ
ก็จะไปเปลี่ยนเลยเจ้าก็จะเนี่ยโลดรุกปาดละคงกัดจริงๆเนี่ยตะเนี่ยตุจีกันนะกระสอบรุ่มเบจิสมานาวีเนี่
Mazi 
When the Buddha was born in India, he was born in what was at that time considered the highest caste within the, uh, that society. The reason was that if he had been born in a low caste, no matter how brilliant his qualities and teaching would have been, uh, those of, upper, of the higher castes would at least initially not have listened to him at all. He lived until the age of 29 as a prince uh, in his father's palace and acquired all the skills uh, of a ruler uh, of his time and demonstrated uh, genuine and in fact extraordinary ability in this regard. But he discovered that his uh, wish to bring about the liberation of all beings could not be achieved through uh, being the ruler of a small area alone. He discovered that uh, regardless of what he did as a ruler, he was, for example, not going to be able to break through or break down the caste system. So he cast aside the life of a prince, discarded his silken garments and jewelry, and undertook a six-year period of intense austerity. During this uh, period of six years, he completely eradicated the two obscurations, the obscuration which is the uh, glacious or mental afflictions and the cognitive obscuration, and developed that consummate wisdom that uh, Rinpoche has been describing, the Trung Rinpoche has been describing. In short, he attained Buddhahood. Now, in fact, it's taught that he had the ability to attain Buddhahood before this time. He demonstrated the attainment of Buddhahood when he did, because it was the right time for him to be able to uh, teach what he uh, intended to teach. From the very start of the Buddha's turning of the Dharma Chakra, or teaching of the Dharma, he began to make statements like, caste and descent are of no importance. Only the virtues that arise within the mind are important. From the very start of his creation of the uh, Sangha or community, he treated uh, students from all different castes as exactly the same, which was unprecedented in that society. So although he himself was technically still a prince, he lived with those of all castes and outcasts in forests, in open meadows, in charnel grounds, and so forth. He taught that a practitioner from any level of society, from any caste, can become an Arya, which means someone who has achieved the path of seeing and directly seen dharmata. He taught the existence of the Sugata Garbha, or Buddha nature, that Trungpa Rinpoche has been speaking of. And he taught this not out of a belief, but out of his direct wisdom or realization uh, of its existence. And for the duration of his life, he was surrounded by disciples or students of all four uh, castes. Now this was very different from anything that had happened in that country previously, because all uh, other forms of uh, religious or spiritual training had been segregated so that people of a certain caste would only uh, rely upon those of the same caste. Because what he was doing was, socially speaking, revolutionary, he was very much criticized for his establishment of the Buddhist Sangha 
or community. People became jealous and they said, the Buddha is not really right. He himself, of course, is of a very high caste and therefore should be respected. But uh, he is misleading people in teaching them to break caste in this way. Worst of all, he treats men and women as though they are the same. Well, of course, there are differences among people. Some people are old, like me. Some people are young. Some people are beautiful. Some people are less beautiful. Some people are tall, like many of you. Some people are short, again, like me. <laughs> but none of these things are really of great importance. When the Buddha ordained monastics, he ordained both men and women. And the root term, a bhikshu, is the same. We can say bhikshu and bhikshuni and so forth. But the basic concept behind male and female ordination is the same. And people from any caste were ordained in the same ceremony. When they practiced the path that he presented initially, many attained the state of an arhat. Now, an arhat can be either male or female. And the state of being an arhat, someone who has destroyed the enemy, which is the kleshas, is no different for a man than for a woman. In either case, you have burnt the seed that would otherwise lead to rebirth in samsara. And this state of liberation is lasting. Now, once someone has attained arhatship, if we look at it from the point of view of the Mahayana, we would say that gradually they will continue to attain Buddhahood and that the state of an arhat per se is somewhat inferior to that of a fully awakened Buddha. But nevertheless, the state of an arhat is tremendous. An arhat has fully realized the selflessness of persons. Now, selflessness itself is beyond distinctions. So therefore, what an arhat realizes is dharmata. Well, why then do we make a distinction between the arhat's realization of the selflessness of persons and the realization of a fully awakened Buddha? The nature or dharmata that is realized is the same. But the scope of application of that nature is distinct. For example, someone could be outside looking at the sky. Someone else could look at the same sky through a small window from within the room. They are both seeing the sky. Nevertheless, obviously, the one is seeing more of the sky than the other. In that way, compared to the realization of a Buddha, the realization of an arhat is like someone looking out the window uh, at the sky. It's for this reason, because the scope of an arhat's realization is, compared to that of a Buddha, somewhat less, that it has become common to refer to the common vehicle as the Hinayana, or lesser vehicle. But even though we may use this term carelessly, we should remember that from our point of view, as ordinary beings, the realization of an arhat is something tremendous. I don't know about you, but I think that the realization of dhammata is quite rare, and therefore worthy of respect, veneration, and supplication. Nevertheless, from the Mahayana point of view, we would have to admit that the achievement of cessation of an arhat is less than the final result of the Mahayana path. My point here is that the Buddha did not just tell people that they could get rid of all of their afflictions and realize great wisdom. He actually taught people how to do it. And from the very beginning of his teaching, people, both men and women, started to actually do it and become arhats. He made no distinction between the attainment of a male and female arhat or between the attainments of arhats who had come from different castes or social positions. 
Now, initially, during the first turning of the Dharma Chakra, the Buddha taught that only human beings could be ordained and could practice the uh, teachings, if the monastic teachings of the Pratimoksha. Eventually, however, when the Sangha had grown and many people were becoming familiar with the Buddha's uh, basic presentation, he introduced what we now call the Mahayana or Bodhisattva Yana. And then he went further and said, in fact, you don't even have to particularly be a human being to practice the Mahayana. The Bodhisattva vow can be taken by other forms of intelligent beings, such as devas and nagas. And it became common that not only his human disciples, but even the devas and naga disciples began to achieve states of bodhisattva realization up to the 8th, 9th, and 10th bhumi. <coughs> he continued in his Mahayana teaching to have disciples who were from the royal caste, the lowest caste, and everything in between. And there was no distinction made between royal bodhisattvas and commoner bodhisattvas. And they took the same vow. The only distinction made within the Mahayana is between what is called an ordinary bodhisattva, that is, someone who has taken the bodhisattva vow but not, let, not yet attained the path of seeing, and an Arya Bodhisattva, which is someone who has achieved the path of seeing of the Mahayana. But even that distinction is temporary, because someone who has taken the Bodhisattva vow is sooner or later going to become an Arya. Now the proof that what the Buddha was doing in his teachings of the common vehicle and the Mahayana is based on a valid understanding is that thousands and thousands of people since that time have achieved the state of a bodhisattva. Tata Shubhaji, Tupa Chushun Sri Guru Sawate, Yudhishi Nimbala Chushun Yoni, Tupa Chushun Sawana Maharaj. Yana yon rung rung ke Dhruva Santo Aum, Chamba to Nyinji Chushun Lati Nesu Maharaj. Penda Tane Kansanda, Samba to Ninji Shuk Chungam, Rondan Kuchul, Chua Chua Tamji, Tipa Chungalan, the Shukor. Khan is now. Sipan Kansan Goge, Noman of the Nepe, Sinchin Chichon Malibange, Sonji Chikon Wangay, Sebeka, Tamjate, Savan Chip Pegomar, Togor, Chitogon, the Dutasari Samba Yichiomar. Tell us then, don't go wrong, you cheap, you go on the Tana. Tell us, love a mother, tell us, one mother. Sipon Consonco is the Margaret Savate, near Mombarindo. They point to nothing to do, some on your so on Latin, eh? Congote, teach the daughters of teaching the anti Diani, the other age. The Tipa Chimbo Sio Casola, Zupu Chimbo Sio Age. Sang the Gil and Hindu Chimbo. Tin Rebusonjiko, Ninji 
Sentin la pena, te wrong and drink. Sentin la pena, te wrong with the yaw. Some with the name. You know, which in the Epicons at the la? Then the cons and the Tibachim Birgium, Tibachim was ever. Te tava konza kahil ni to chimbo yo kahil chunkyo ma to me ba te kahari sona sena ke wa ne ne tambe chula draba shu ma jo ta hon dare rumbe ji suma na ke sena ngo so ja chimbo so ba so ni so le sena ngo so ja chimbo so tambe chula draba ka se yo na di cha draba to so di so cha de draba to ta yo re Dua kasih, kasih dah na. Tapi dah tu isi dia ni, tapi jambu tu ni je syarat sampe. Di sini ni pada siji orang na, tapi di bawah jambu tu rikin isi wate. Kongsi na kakak maris, dua sama tu guna sama le. Tiada tenye tu ni di bawah jambu tu kongsi siwa sama le. Tiada tenye di bawah jambu tu sah, di lantai siapa kasa, tu dan dan dah siapa naik, siapa tu pemi, lalu lola sofa. Then he said, that's why I'm not going to do it. 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 The last time I was going to do it, I was going to do it. 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 Di kongtaran kian tu, yang tu yang kiri orang balat tu ni, tu kongsi na sah nak jadi kian orang. Kalau song song sah tumbuh tu ni, tu tu pun kongsi tu sah dosa di mari siapa tu, tu ni ni, dosa di jauh mari kong. Yang mungkin sah lewa, cuni ni yang betul sah. Dua jam besar malam tu, song jis pun besar tu, kalau dua tu, dua mari. Yang ni yang tu kongsi la. Kongsa kaki, that's a true secret. Kongsa na tanda nanzo. Saja chimpa tempa kausa. Ta rong rong ka sangka nilu la. Nyamba ya zi kausa la. Kua chi wa tong. Tila ngishi chi wa tong. Ngu sto sang sangpa ka. Ta ba shanyi mo pi ori. Te ma re. Ngishi chi wa te. Suntong ko lo nari. Sentuh keluar, sentuh keluar dengan nizi ni, nizi ni dia cuni dengan bahasa wanita tak mari. Cuni dengan bangun suatu tempat, kasut tangkar rumput je, semua ada, konsen lah, rong rong sah, semua semua, rong rong sah semua ada, nizi ni bahasa mari. Di kasih kita ni tujuh lah, tapi rumput je kasut pun susah semua semua. Tapi jika ni yang saya yang ni masa kita gua mesti dia nak. Nyawasan leh berkau sila, ni, dengan orang dosa nyawa lah, supaya tahu nyawa lah, supaya nyam cakri, cakri orang dah, cakri siang orang ni, ti cakri kau sila, tadi musik tadi kan, topat di kisah musang kita ni, kan sila, ngajar am tenzam bat hukori, ti orang ribet tak hingkak na, nyam dia tak nanti orang di lori, yeri mata, matu bihi ngocawa ni mari. Kalau tu ni, nyam sewa tu ngan tu ganggu ganggu je. Jadi jam botong, lebotong, ya kecuan dah kah, kerja gunggu orang itu mari. Nyam tu nyam sewa tu, pernah masih betul ni. Sempat cuk, sempat dau, sempat truk gua betul ni pernah masih nyam gunggu orang. Nyam tu nama nasi apa yang ramai, ya kecuan dah ini ni juga mari. Yang ni tu, tiga orang berjaga tu bersih sangat sangat, semua nasi. Nyam kongsian lah, tiada tu ni kongsi. Zimba meba, yoga ni sambil gagam meba, dua cahana, dua tu meba. Tapi kalau mau ni mana susu sengkang mau kongsi awak tiada tu na, nyam tu tu ni rambi gani, atau apa tu cik kori. Nyam tu atau apa sebab tu, cik jiba tu cik ni sambil. Nenek sengkang ni lu susu tong ni atau apa cik na, satu ambo tu tu ni cik kori. Tak nampak orang sedo kemari. Nyam ni tadi, tadi dia kemari. Nyam sewa tu, tadi kongsi na. Kau seorang buat sih sama-sama, rujuk sih sama-sama, muka nak jadi sama-sama. Tiap tahun kita, tadi dia lantas bayar na, sedo kiri. 
Tin 
something else. He used the words peace and bliss together as many times as he could. <laughs> and I know it was on purpose. Okay, here we go. The distinction between the uh, common vehicle and the Mahayana is not made on the basis of an inherent difference uh, on the, in the nature of the individuals who practice these vehicles. It's not the case that a, someone who is naturally disposed to Mahayana practice has more Buddha nature or better Buddha nature than someone who is naturally disposed toward the practice of the common vehicle. The difference between these individuals which make them uh, disposed toward one or the other form of practice is in the difference of the degree to which their obscurations have been purified. And as a result, the difference in their degree of love and compassion for others. In general, the more obscurations that are removed, the more love and compassion for other beings you will have. For those who for the time being have less love and compassion for others and are particularly saddened by samsara and therefore in a great hurry to escape from it, the Buddha taught what we call the common vehicle. Now for someone like that, the idea, I will remain in samsara until each and every being has been brought to Buddhahood and only thereafter will I attain it myself, is terrifying. It's just too much. Now, in order to achieve the liberation from samsara that is the aim of the common vehicle, perceiving that what they must do is get rid of all kleshas, perceiving that it is kleshas that keep them in samsara, they eradicate the kleshas and thereby achieve the state of an arhat, which is liberation. Now, what makes the Mahayana so maha, or great, is not that the people who practice it uh, are taller or bigger. It is that the Mahayana was taught for those with great courage. Mahayana practitioners know how miserable samsara is. It's not that they do not know the sufferings of samsara. But they also know that these sufferings affect all beings and not just themselves. They recognize that while all beings have the same potential for Buddhahood and are undergoing, uh, nevertheless, they are undergoing the same type of suffering. Now, the difference between these two attitudes, 
that of a practitioner of the common vehicle and that of a practitioner of the Mahayana, is not in their innate potential for Buddhahood. It uh, is a difference in temporary conditions, the removal uh, of obscurations and so forth. Also, it can depend on influence. For example, if someone encounters a spiritual friend who teaches one the Mahayana, then that can cause a person to embrace the Mahayana as well. Once one has adopted the Mahayana viewpoint or outlook, then one regards the achievement of nirvana or liberation oneself without attempting to bring others to that same state as lacking in love and lacking in compassion. And therefore, one feels that one has no choice but to resolve to bring all beings to Buddhahood. Once that resolution has been generated, then no matter how much difficulty you have to go through in order to benefit others, provided that it is beneficial to others, it is going to be OK with you. And that type of courageous compassion is what makes someone of what is called the Mahayana type. As for why we have different degrees of courage, it is a result of our, the degree and style of our previous connection with uh, Dharma, connection in previous lives. And also, it is a difference in the degree to which we have uh, gathered the accumulation of merit of which Trungpa Rinpoche has been speaking. The more merit you accumulate, the more you purify your obscurations, and the more love and compassion, and therefore the more courage you will have. So someone who is of the Mahayana type, or the Mahayana potential, is not inherently different from anyone else, or inherently better. The difference is in the, their having purified more obscurations. When the Buddha began to teach the Mahayana, his teachings became even more widespread and even more socially inclusive. As a result, more and more people, far more than before, began to achieve various degrees of attainment. He also provided a far more detailed account of the stages of the path. For example, he showed that uh, in the path of seeing and the path of meditation, there are the 10 levels or 10 bhumis uh, which are traversed by a Mahayana practitioner. <coughs> now, what Rinpoche, uh, what Trangu Rinpoche said uh, yesterday, that a bodhisattva who achieves the first bhumi has achieved irreversibility, is of course the case. And this is one of the things that uh, distinguishes uh, the Mahayana. But nevertheless, I feel I should talk about this whole issue of the path of seeing and how it relates to the recognition of mind's nature a little bit, because I'm concerned that you might um, be a little bit confused. What I want to make clear is that it is of the utmost importance not to mistake either understanding or conceptual certainty for realization. Now, when you receive Mahamudra instruction, and you practice it, and you gain uh, some confidence that you know how to proceed with the practice, because you understand what is being said about your mind, and you understand how to look at the mind, and you become certain of this, this is not realization of the mind's nature. This is certainty, which is intellectual, and it is dualistic. Please understand the difference between that type of insight and the type of insight which Rinpoche was describing as self-illuminating and uh, self-knowing. Now, Tongu Rinpoche made this very clear, but I wish to make sure that it is especially clear. It may be unnecessary for me to go through this again, but just in case it is necessary, uh, I'm going to do so. 
Judging by the questions um, that have been asked here, I uh, infer that many of you uh, experience things such as bliss, uh, lucidity, and non-thought uh, in your meditation. I myself do not experience these things, but uh, it sounds like at least some of you do, so we'd better deal with it. <laughs> any experience of, that has any kind of quality you can describe, any kind of content that you can uh, describe in any way, whether it's bliss or lucidity or anything, by the very nature of having content, is certainly not realization of the mind's nature. Content is only possible when something is an object of perception or experience. If there is content, it is therefore an object. If there is an object, it is therefore dualistic. If it is dualistic, it is not realization. The other thing that I want to mention is that in talking about experience, we've mostly been talking about nice experiences. I regret to inform you that, <laughs> that not all. He gets worried because he's not sure which part of what he said is making people laugh. So then he starts to really listen. I regret to inform you that while the, the instruction may make you uh, expect meditation to be wholly positive and relaxing, the experiences that often arise are not limited to the pleasant or the positive. There is a whole category of experience that's called the experience of a rough ride. <laughs> but as Trong Rinpoche was saying, uh, all of these experiences whether they are pleasant or not, must be treated as exactly the same, and none as having any uh, greater value than the others. As Rinpoche said, it's important not to become excited by the positive or frightened by the apparently negative experiences. Furthermore, experience and realization are entirely different from one another. We have been speaking here of inference and direct cognition, inferential valid cognition and direct valid cognition. Experience is actually a type of inferential cognition. Realization is direct cognition. And furthermore, as Rinpoche said, experience is like mist. It will vanish. Now, I don't know if this is a particular problem in this society, but I can tell you from, that it is or has been a great problem where I come from, that people confuse experience for realization. This becomes a terrible problem for some practitioners and can actually uh, ruin their lives. Because an experience of emptiness, for example, might lead you to believe that nothing matters, that actions have no consequences. Realization of emptiness could never possibly lead you to that conclusion. But experience of it, because experience is partial, could lead to that. And it has happened uh, again and again that practitioners who've behaved very well, led good lives, and lived sanely, have had an experience of emptiness and discarded their discipline and ruined their lives. All of this happens because people confuse or mistake experience for realization. Now, experiences can be extremely intense. It's therefore not surprising that people make this mistake. For example, you could experience that your physical body disappears entirely. You could experience such intense cognitive lucidity that you can literally see through walls and know the minds of others. And none of this has any value. 
because it will vanish. And anything that will vanish is not realization. Now, this was all something of a digression. And now I'll go back to what I was talking about. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> after teaching the Mahayana, and after the Mahayana teachings became accepted and prevalent, the Buddha taught the Vajrayana. And just as the Mahayana was taught for those with uncommon courage, the Vajrayana was taught for those among those with uncommon courage who had uncommon discernment and especially great diligence. In short, whose desire to benefit beings was so intense that they wish to achieve Buddhahood in one life and one body in order to do so. Now, we might ask, why, not, why did he not teach this in the beginning, at the best of times? Because each level of his teaching depended upon the foundation of the previous one. As you know, Vajrayana practice begins with empowerment. Empowerment is always the starting point of Vajrayana. Empowerment is not differentiated by gender or caste. There is no such thing in Buddhism as an empowerment for men only, or an empowerment for women only. In different empowerments are not given to kings and commoners. There is no empowerment for kings in the Buddha Dharma. Anyone who realizes the meaning of the Vajrayana teachings is called a Vidyadra, a holder of awareness, whether they are male or female. In Tibetan, it's, it's gender specific, so it, it sounds better. And I'm not sure of the female form of Vidyadra, right, so I'm not going to try to do it. Furthermore, no distinction is made between dakas and dakinis, male and female awakened Vajrayana beings. Neither is considered superior to the other. W with regard to the Buddhas of the five families, the male Buddhas are not seen as better than the female ones, or the female ones as better than the male ones. In short, Vajrayana is the final expression of the fact that Buddha nature is the same in all beings. Now, when the Buddha's teachings are properly conveyed and practiced, this starts a movement of genuine peace in the area in which this teaching and practice occurs. Because when people hear the teachings and practice them, their kleshas are reduced and eventually eradicated. When people don't have kleshas, they don't react aggressively to others. So they start an occurrence of peace. For example, if the parents in a family are loving and compassionate, the family will automatically be happy because the children will be assured of their parents' benevolence. If the ruler or governor of a country is loving and compassionate, the whole country will tend to be happy. On the other hand, if the parents, or even one parent, like the father of a family, is angry and abusive, happiness in that family is impossible. So it is principally by cultivating love and compassion ourselves in our practice that we radiate peace which can encompass a whole area and an entire city. Now, I've just tried to talk a little bit about uh, peace and happiness. <laughs> and I know I've barely scratched the surface uh, of this topic. Nevertheless, I've taken a while. I also want to apologize for substituting the profound words of a great, uh, pr for taking, yeah, it doesn't come out well in English. Well, substituting my babble for the words of a great being. And if you want to ask any questions, go ahead.
Do we have a mic for questions? Yeah. <clears throat> Oh. How is it that um, the Vajrayana is for beings who have great courage and discernment, yet people such as us are um, re receive these teachings? That that the Rumbajeg song that is na sanga doji thakpa the gangsa ningto chewa sharap chewa. Shenpenge Sampa Shuk Jumpo Yepake Morsum Paris, Yangatso de Sanga Mompo Gogitus, Mompo Shugioris, De Dow Yontin Kayame, and they are Nanzo Tanda Tadi Tukanda La Soma Gutu Tuji of a town, Ponji of a Nanson and Bayovati, Nakawa Mombu Grandin of the Sosa, Rava Jonson. だいたいセナンティクタブクタンのタワレイ。ティヒネテネソソギニルキグレイ。カンリセナ、ナソンジェ、モンボペパカウソロソマチュ。サワンタニョマリ。ブラワタカンリセナソンガンデドラナケタネ
says, ask about the tale of Kama Rupa. Mm -hmm. So please tell us the tale of Kama Rupa. Is he the guy who's outside his house? Yeah. Who can't, and it's not explained in the commentary? No, I, I, I mean in the, the whole commentary? It's not, I, that's what I thought. All right. That the the Sikje Sikje Kane Sikje Nishutsa Chikpa Nana that the the Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we, we just went through that. We're kind of working backwards here. Sikje Nishutsa Chikpa Genana that the Lam Lokpa Pongwege Menga Ge that the Shaloka Jedua Degi Dampore De Nana Dene uh, in the commentary, does it use the Sanskrit name Kamarupa? In the in the Tibetan, does it say Kamarupa or did you translate it? Because I'm just trying to think of how. So it was Dupe Yunten. Kamarupa is Dupe Zuk. Was it? Dupe? It's in Sanskrit Kamarupa. Okay. Well, anyway. The that the the Donna. Sikjege, Sikjen on the Sunga do, that the Kamarupa ge lojudris, Sevache yore, Kamarupa sures. Don't lock, throw dere, Kamarupa seva sure. Standing on a hill, Mundu, Kilna Kamarupa seva, Lages of Silk in the world. Karma mare, Kama, Dupa, Dupezo, Dupezo. Uh, please ask Trongwa uh, Mache, I don't know. <laughs> Literally, Kamarupa means a form of desire, but beyond that, uh, I don't know what, I don't know the tale. Yeah. <coughs> you said that. Um, uh, Siddhartha uh, gave up two things after six years of uh, practicing yeah. uh, klesias and uh, the last thing I didn't get. Cognitive obscuration or the obscuration of the knowable. There's two ways to read it. Shidrip. Cognitive obscuration. You yeah. want to ask Rinpoche what it is or do you just wanted me to repeat it? I just want to, you to repeat it. Cognitive obscuration. Thank you. Uh, Rinpoche, would it be fair to say when you're talking about uh, realizing your mind's nature, maybe a better word to use would be knowing how your mind is working rather than uh, what you're experiencing? Uh, are you talking about the uh, as a term for the full realization of it or just for the initial understanding? No, for the initial understanding oh, to initial. work and oh, to... Okay build on. Okay. And, and, and I have another part to that. Okay. And it would also be true that you can know by your own actions, if you have less anger and mm -hmm. more compassion within yourself, mm -hmm. that you're on the, mm -hmm. the better track. Mm -hmm. Jele Hakoa Sam La Ming Tak Nagajimari Pes. Nisana Susuge Lam Nor Song Masong Wanke Tsede Nyomo Nyong the Song Wanda Ninji Chir Song Wanke Tatme Moshe Tugamari Pes. No, Two Jambachi 
Tambo, Penachak, Jenge, Trade, or Shune, Semge, Semge, Tene, Nature, Dawa, Ted Hako, a castle, De Semge, Jele, Sam Tawam, Semge, Jele, Sam, Semge, Nature, Sam, Hako, my pes. Oh, really, really. Get two bottle, eh? Two bottle, then a somber, somber, and a gumba hungry. The two by young tobacco, eh? You know, when they go on by ending here with the tongue go on. To answer the first part of your question, that would be an appropriate designation because the initial um, uh, insight into uh, the mind's nature and functions is essentially at the level of hearing rather than um, meditation or even uh, reflection or thinking. It's uh, when there's that understanding of the mind's uh, nature and understanding of the mind's functions, that results from having properly uh, heard the explanation. However, it is not of no significance because it does form the basis for one's pursuit of practice, which will eventually lead to the discernment of thinking or reflection and the discernment of meditation. With regard to your second question, it is very true that uh, the diminishment of the pleasures and the increase of compassion uh, is a sign of an authentic uh, path or successful practice. Generally speaking, it is said the sign of having heard, which means heard the Dharma, is to be peaceful and subdued. The sign of having practiced or meditated is to have few or no uh, pleasures. If you have heard the Dharma properly, then you know the reasons why you should not run wild and mindlessly. So therefore, automatically, if you have heard and understood the teachings, you will uh, become calm and tamed in your uh, demeanor. And if you practice properly, then as you mentioned in your question, your kleshas will gradually diminish and Corresponding to that, there will be an in ever increasing uh, recognition and display of wisdom. <coughs> Rinpoche, I'm wondering if you would say something about what occurred in Tibet in terms of uh, merit and the con where the Buddhist teachings, because of the communist takeover, then seems to be increasingly moving to the West. And I'm wondering if you would care to say something about what that dynamic is. What that? I didn't get the last Dynamic has... Dynamic. It, dynamic is? That the... Pe majoke sawatang tene dela tene ダンペチュノチョトダワケコラレ。うん。チェトンソンタテペテマチョケザワデペチチソナムケジェレレペスタンテネテンパデベネマニャムニョプチョラテサンダワデテネソナムケチェチョンダンデダワケジェレレペス
uh, for those teachings. For example, if you light a fire, then you're just making a spark isn't enough. The fire has to grow, it has to be fed, and also the wind has to blow on it to cause it to spread. So there have to be reasons for something to happen. Nevertheless, um, it's obviously a very unpleasant thing for people who went through that to have to be told. Rinpoche, um, even though the holy teachings of the Dharma and enlightenment are available to women as well as men, women who have attained Buddha mind, such as Mandarava, were treated abusively and defied often rather than honored. And now we rarely hear of them. Why is that? Hmm. <laughs> ちょっとパーツあんで、でね、ちょうがだ、でね、え、ดิงซองเนี่ยคนนําไปกอลาเชดายังโกจุมันดอสอืมเอาเลยแต่เอ่อ <laughs> ก็อะตอบปอเตตังจีซองดิรับเรตินเดชวะเตอนนองยินะคงกอจินเดนเบกะเอกอสนาลองชุตะบังโกเรชินตาตะกาวซินะยองเงเนเงตรอมบะลาก
given the social conditions, if 100 women attain something, those 100 women will naturally rise to positions of prominence. If 1,000 women generate attainment, all 1,000 will rise to positions of prominence. There are no longer the social factors which will inhibit that. So this will be the last question. Yeah, yours. Yeah. Yeah. Rinpoche, I'm wondering if uh, you would have any final comments to share with us about your, I think, almost quarter of a century of living here in the United States. And I have a further thought, too that in the last 22 or 23 years, there has not been that much growth of the Sangha, the, the ordained Sangha in the United States, and many more people that have taken vows have also left those vows. So it doesn't look like the United States is a very fertile soil for growth of the ordained Sangha. But now the heart of my question, do you think that it would be a good idea where I think here in the United States we have many maturing practitioners, if more people, uh, practitioners, lay practitioners, were to take Genyan vows. Do you have any thoughts about that? Uh, maturing, do you mean becoming mature in practice or getting old? Um, I was thinking in terms of maturing in practice. Okay. But okay. I guess getting old is also a factor. I'm an exhibit of that. Okay. Uh, the you know, that then Kajan <laughs> Kaujie Nunnegdene 
To answer your, your first question, it's true I've been here more than 25 years. And the situation I observe now is uh, fundamentally different from what it was when I first came here. When I first came to this country and began to teach, I would talk and talk and talk. And then people would get up and ask questions. And it would never have anything to do with what I was talking about. <laughs> it was as if they hadn't heard a word. They would ask about the status of women. And then they would complain about how they were abused by their parents and other things. But it was never about any of the things that I had brought up. Then, eventually, His Holiness the Jawan Kamapa and the Sunka Lab Nagajaya and Chapje Trungpa Rambache, Chapje Kalo Rambache came, and things really changed over time. The biggest change, I would say, is that people uh, listen now, and they actually hear uh, the teachings. As for your second question, it's true uh, that uh, there have been uh, some uh, problems. But many people have actually undertaken monastic ordination. It's true what you say, that many of them have found it hard to, to keep the ordination. I think, however, there are two reasons for this. One reason is that the, this country is, is very prosperous. It is an affluent society. One of the consequences of affluence is a diminishment of renunciation. So lacking enough renunciation, people do tend to treat their vows uh, more casually. That is one thing. The other reason is that there are comparatively few foundations for monastics. There are, there are uh, very few places where there are entirely monastic communities. If you want to have the successful uh, pursuit of a monastic lifestyle, you have to give them a place to live where there are just monastics, just, just male monastics or just female monastics, as we do uh, in India. And if you give people that type of environment, of course, I can't say all of them will, but most of them will make it. As for your third question, of course it's uh, advisable and even necessary that people receive the Genyan or Upasaka ordination, the fundament of which is the vow of refuge, which ordains you as an Upasaka who holds the three refuges. Some form of Upasaka ordination is essential for any other a vow. You cannot generate bodhicitta, take the bodhisattva vow, nor can you receive the Samaya vows of secret mantra without the foundation of some kind of upasaka vow. That's all, Tani. And the nation to Jeep gives all on the Naka Jaka Nala Sobe, and you tend the day in Jeep on Mount Rula Sopa, Mepa Shawatong, Tazu Tata Shiva Yay, Ronkin Singing Gang, Sangi Jelly, Nasan the Jupa, and Nan the Chene, never so you son did yet.
please dedicate the virtue of this session to the freedom uh, in this world from all warfare and disputation. Finally, to the achievement by all beings without exception of the full realization of the qualities of the nature of their minds and the achievement of awakening. And as a condition for that occurring to the longevity of all great teachers. And in that way, uh, please recite the uh, longevity supplications and dedication. <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh.